So we're going to be putting on the new illuminated charge port. Uh, several things need to be done. First, the car needs to be jacked up, which I haven't done yet. The front wheel taken off, and then the fender liner will need pulled off. Uh, I started with something else. This rubber piece here needs to be replaced. This one will need to, it comes with a shorter one due to the compression of the new part that's in the charge port. Just so everybody knows, this piece here does not come off on its own. You actually take the back piece off. And if you use a plastic trim tool, You can get behind here and wedge it, and this will pop off. This is what it looks like on the inside. There's the paint side, and it just uses tabs to snap on and off. There, are, it looks like it has screw holes, but it doesn't. They're just uh, like retainer. Um, I don't know what you call them, but it's just uh, just retainers. Uh, the holes will slide over those this is what it looks like on its own so this is the factory unit as you see when you pull it out of the box it looks like it'll screw in somewhere but it actually doesn't uh, the new one has a bit of a different shape to it and it looks like it's actually warped when you pull it out of the box but once i put it on uh you can see where it kind of Looks like it was warped there, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal. The port has its own seal around the outside, and this will push up against the new illuminated part once it goes in. I just need to snap the uh, door back on. All right, next, once you got the wheel off, 19 millimeter socket, by the way, I will put a jack stand under this. You're going to need to remove the trim panel down here splash guard and it is held on by torque bits torque bit bolts there are multiple bolts all around the wheel well liner and up top you have push tabs as well remove those and we'll move forward okay now with the wheel well liner pulled back you just need to get access to the back of the port this will be secured up in here. You want to pull that loose. It's got a wire. Take that and tuck it back out of your way just for the time being because you're going to be drilling some holes in this and you don't want to hit that wire. So just make sure it's tucked back away from everything for the time being. All right, this is the illuminated charge port. On the back of it, you will find this. This is how it comes. All right, and this is double-sided tape that you eventually pull off when you put it in. But for the time being, it has four screws, three tabs attached. I removed all of those so that I can take this off and put it on the charge port to use as a template. To drill my holes. I'm going to be drilling the holes for the three tabs that need to push in to secure it. So we're just going to stick this piece in. It actually fits in pretty good without anything securing it. It's nice and tight. That's how it's going to fit. So you want to make these three holes right there so that those tabs can fit in. And then I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the instructions mention a drain hole to push the electrical wire through. And, uh, I don't know, we might be drilling another hole. I haven't found a hole for the wire to go through yet. But I'll update that when we get there. There we are with the three holes drilled. I use an 1164 inch bit. That's 1164. I'm going to take this off and we can put it back on the charge port. And the holes should be just where they need to be. Just uh, take your time, do them right, and don't shove it in there hard. There's no reason to over penetrate. 
All right, a little bit of a correction. These are 3 16th inch bits. This is 5 16th, eight millimeter. And the reason for that is on the far end of it, there's a thicker piece of rubber. So it looks like the hole's too big, but once that starts going in, you're gonna wish it was that big. So uh, let's give this a test fit real quick. Let me pull the slack out. This thing should fit right in there. Yep, yeah, okay, so the whole whole fits. You can see it. There you go. And then uh, this whole unit will go in. I still got the tabs on the back. Just like that. I don't want to push it in because It'll tab in if I push it all the way. And then uh, that'll seat perfectly the way it's supposed to. It's ready to, uh, I think it's ready to go in. I just got to take the adhesive off the back side. That red adhesive has to come off. And then these tabs will go into the holes we made. Let me clean it off and stick it on. And here it is fully installed. Fairly seamless. Um, I will recommend don't just shove it in. Those orange tabs in the back will actually move around if they miss the holes. They'll impede the installation. You'll have to pull it back off to again. So you might want to just kind of start with the bottom and kind of lever it in and try to keep an eye on those tabs. Use your finger or tool if you have to to keep them aligned until you can actually see them go in the holes you drilled. And then you can push it and snap it on. And uh, I mean, it ain't going anywhere. And then we've already installed this new part. So looks like it works. It's pretty good. Now all we have to do is the electrical side which seems pretty straightforward. Uh, for that, we have to pop the hood and take the battery out. Okay, and now that the port is complete, the only thing left to do is the electrical side. Let's connect these two pins to the harness that's underneath this battery. Uh, keep in mind while you're working on this, this makes a fantastic tool tray. So, <laughs> feel free to leave tools you need up there. Just uh, don't leave them there when you shut the hood. Uh, what we're going to need to do is remove the bracket, undo the negative terminal, then undo the positive terminal, then using a third, these are 10 mil by the way, for the, for the connections. Everything else here I believe is a 13 mil socket. We're going to undo the brackets, take the battery completely out, uh, move the computer over, and then the battery tray will need to come out, and then the connection we need should be underneath that. Power, ground I push back, we've got one, two, three, four 13 mil bolts to get the tray out. All right, here's what it looks like when it comes out. There's the tray. Um, expect to not have a lot of wiggle room. It's in there pretty tight. So just to give you all a little bit of uh, help um, one, when you take the power off, also undo this and this because it's intertwined onto this bracket, which makes it a pain to get off. So this is an eight mil. This nut will not come off completely, so you don't worry about it flying off. And this one's just a uh, push-in tab plug. Then you're able to route those out of the way and uh, make room for the bracket to come out. Also, there are a whole bunch of these things, these little tabs all around it with harnesses attached to it. So you may not see them all, but you'll know when you start trying to pull it out, you'll find them. Um, also, the computer 
if you see how it's attached it attaches right here you're going to want to stick a tool like a screwdriver down to this tab to push it out push down this way and then you can pull the computer up and bend it out of the way and on the back side of the bracket which is back here you'll see this thing and you won't know how to get it off uh, looking at it if you just unplug it it's still gonna be attached to the hose and a bracket so you it's not gonna help you any you want to get it off completely on the back side where you can't see sorry not the bracket it's down here so this portion is where it slides into but on the back side where you won't be able to see but you can feel there is a tab that you can push and if you just push that tab in if you reach behind the bracket push it in with your finger then the sensor will pull out and you can just you know let it sit out of your way take that so that out of your way you cannot reach this thing I don't believe without doing this and this is okay and this is what we're looking for right here there's no way to get to this <laughs> other than pulling that battery out and once you get to it we need the uh, engine side of the harness not the body side so we should be able to uh, disconnect this like, like so you can see it I'm pushing that up and that should come out and you're not gonna have a whole lot of room to work but uh, we're gonna pull oh, here we go I might be able to do it with one hand oh what do you know you're gonna pull this back cover off looks like it comes off really easy yeah oh yeah look at there focus come on look at that comes off set it aside this is what we're after this bad boy right here on the back side are your pins and I believe what we're after is pin 28 and pin 30 make sure you're going from the back not the front or vice versa whichever this side all right, and we need to pull the these white insulators, these seals out, so that we can push our pins in. So let me double check the diagram, make sure I get them in correctly or it won't work. We'll continue. So I've heard people say that trying to get them out to the back side, they can get stuck in there. So I'm just using an old resistor. Uh, you can probably use a bobby pin or anything. And if you just go through that center hole and give it a little push, and it finally comes out. It looks like this. You're not going to need that anymore. Alright. I did confirm that pin 28 on your left will be the black wire. And pin 30 right here on the right will be the white wire. So pin 28 black, pin 30 white. All right, and once you get them in, it should look like this. Pin 28, pin 30. Make sure you line them up correctly. Push it all the way in until it snaps. They go in fairly easy. They're not hard. You don't need to fight with them. Your pin should look like that. And then we're going to take this cover, snap it back on the back, and reattach it right here to the main harness this is the harness completed you 
reroute gently. You don't want to bend a pin. Push it back in. Make sure this is pushed back all the way. It should go in fairly easy. And then this should close back down. That's it. It's now connected. Now, with this, you want to route this wire just away from everything. And however clean you want to make it, some people just throw it in there and don't worry about it. They don't like their engine parts in here moving around. But uh, I like my things fairly clean, so I'm going to loop this up, zip tie it back, and keep it away from everything. All right, and here we go, all completed. Uh, put everything back together the way you took it apart. I'm not going to get into the detail on that. Grab your charger. Pop your door open. There she is. Plug her in. There it is. Now, I'm not sure if y'all are aware. I mean, it's daylight out here. So this is how it looks in the daylight. Uh, but it actually blinks. Same with the dash. It blinks in sequence with the current rate of charge. So one blink, 25%, two blinks, 50%, three and four blinks. So right now I'm getting a three blink. So the car is probably around 75% currently. So you can just, you know, look out your window or look at the car and see what its current charge rate is. You don't have to come out and check it or look on the app. I mean, it's an option. And then get out. Light stays on for 60 seconds without uh, touching anything. Close it up. All done.